So, I wanted to talk to you about a growing epidemics of loneliness and I don't know that this is true for all parts of the world. I know it's true for North America. I've seen um, articles about America. I live in Canada. I personally have been experiencing a great deal of loneliness, particularly in the culture that I'm right now and very different than what I know. And I have been thinking and trying a variety of activities to connect because loneliness has nothing to do about being alone. You can be alone and be very comfortable. You can be in a crowd and feel lonely. And if you're anything like me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that you can be at the family table and feel lonely. And the loneliness is a sense that you're not seen, you're not heard, you're not understood. Um, and the other way around, people don't reveal themselves to you so you can see or hear the person next to you. The conversations can be vague. They can be impersonal. You can have a conversation about objective, objective facts, which is uh, like journalism, and still not feel connected. You can educate yourself. You can exchange information, but you're still not connected, emotionally connected to um, the other person or to the other people. And the um, connection can be verbal and nonverbal. Nonverbal connection is singing in a choir together, community singing. It creates a connection even if you don't know anything about the people that you sing with. You can feel it in your body, you can feel it in, in the spaciousness of your breathing and in the warm um, sensations around your heart. It's the same with community dancing. So probably the best example that I can think of is biodanza or ecstatic dance or um, contact improvisation where people move together, share the same rhythm, dance in harmony with each other. Maybe they don't know anything about each other, but the shared movement and touch and eye contact creates a deep connection. On the verbal level, we're all at a certain stage of development. We have a certain depth and we need to be met at our deepest levels of uh, thinking and of being by people who share the same altitude. So you can still connect to some extent uh, to another person and talk about what you dreamt last night or, I don't know, recipes of food and have a degree of connection, but there's still a gap missing between that shared um experience and conversation and all the depth that you have that hasn't been uncovered, which can be only met by people who share your altitude or your depth. I um, walked two days ago at the dog park together with a, a medical doctor, a GP, that I met at the park and we had a, a very interesting conversation. Interesting in in the, in the good way and then the other way. Interesting because in just one hour, two complete strangers got, we got to talk about everything from dogs to philosophy to uh, health and to religion. And several times 
this man who um, appeared to be very confident, he spoke very certain of his views and the information he was dispensing. And several times I tried to say something and he didn't even hear that I was saying anything. He just continued and continued and he is single. And I've wondered about why he's single. I've also been curious how he connects with his patients at work. Um, this is not something that clearly medical school teaches. This is not something that regular school teaches. How to listen. How to listen deeply. It's such a basic um, necessity in in communion that is sorely lacking. When you speak to someone, you see, I don't have to do it now because I'm in front of the camera, so I don't know what you're doing. If you're uh, fidgeting or yawning or scratching, I don't know. But if you were um, across, sitting across from me in the same room and I would be talking with you, I should be able to see your response to what I'm saying and when you want to say something and uh, read your body language there and also feel with you and feel my resonance with probably what you're feeling in response to what I'm saying. So this is what is necessary for connect. This is part of what is necessary for connection. It's uh, paying attention, it's being present with another, it's something that we don't really learn even in the meditation hall. In the meditation hall you learn how to be present with yourself, with your own breath. Me, myself and my breath, but not with each other. It's not relational. And uh, how to reveal ourselves to others. We learn how to conceal ourselves, how to conceal our flaws, uh, how to use makeup concealer. And we hire image consultants to project a certain image. We don't have truthfulness consultants or authenticity consultants to show up in our naked truthfulness to each other. And this is exactly what makes us lonely. It's not time spent alone, but it's that disconnect part of it uh, coming from from clumsiness, part of it, this is exactly what the culture and the the system is teaching us and ingraining in us. And it's costing us health. It's costing us well-being because we all have the deep ingrained longing to belong and to connect. Okay, this is it for today. Love to you. Kisses. Bye.